Hi, this is Estelle Traingove, and this is my introduction to operational amplifiers for the LN1000 and LN2008 electric circuits courses at the University of the Witwatersrand, Johannesburg. You worked with an operational amplifier in your first lab when you built an audio amplifier. And the operational amplifier that you used in the lab looked like this. It was a chip with a little mark at the top to show you where the top was. And then it had eight legs and the pinout diagram in the data sheet showed you what each leg was. But in circuit analysis, we're going to use a symbol for the operational amplifier that looks like this, a triangle, and on this end of the triangle, we've got the output voltage V out, and then it's got a minus sign and a plus sign And it's very important to note that these minus and plus signs don't signify a negative and a positive voltage. They signify that this output is the inverting output. So in the case of operational amplifiers, the minus sign indicates the inverting output. And the plus sign indicates the non-inverting input. And then the other important thing that you need to know about an operational amplifier, and often this won't be indicated in the circuit analysis diagrams is that you have to have some kind of supply voltage to power the operational amplifier, the source voltage. And that's connected. Some of the pins on the chip are, are connected to the plus V source and minus V source. And that's important because the operational amplifier amplifies the input signal that you put in, um, but it can only amplify it to a certain point. So if you have V in on this axis and V out on this axis, then it will amplify it, but it will only amplify it up to the point where the supply voltage sits. So if this is minus Vs and this is plus Vs, then you'll see it can't amplify it beyond that point. So the supply voltage limits the amount by which you can amplify the input signal. And that makes sense because you can't make voltage out of nothing. Otherwise, you would be able to put in an input sync signal and output an infinitely large input signal, which doesn't make sense. The real inside of an operational amplifier looks like this drawing which comes from your course um, notes, your prescribed text, the Hanrahan. And um, it's figure 9.1 of the Hanrahan. And you can see that the inside of an operational amplifier is made up of a large number of transistors and resistors and capacitors. And if we had to analyze all of that, it would be very complicated. But engineers are always like to find a shortcut, so we're going to 
use a model that simplifies the analysis a lot. So to recap, in circuit analysis, we're go going to use a symbol that looks like this. And I'm going to show you now a model of how an operational amplifier works. And that model will help us understand um, what we need to do when there's an operational amplifier in our circuit and we need to analyze it. So how it seems to work, all that, that complicated configuration of transistors and resistors and things, is at the input, it looks as if there's an infinitely large resistance. That's what it looks like. So we'll call that R in. And then if this is the inverting input and this is the non-inverting input, then let's call this V minus and we'll call this V plus to indicate the voltage at the inverting and non-inverting input and we'll call this current I minus and this current I plus. So because it looks like this R in looks like something that tends to infinity. It looks like a very, very large resistor. And for that reason, I minus is equal to I plus is equal to zero. So that resistance, the, the way an operational amplifier works is that looks like such a large resistance that no current flows into those two terminals. And that's the one key point that you need to remember in analyzing an operational amplifier. And then at the output end, it looks like a resistor R out connected to a dependent voltage source connected to ground and the voltage of that voltage source is some gain A times V plus minus V minus And then, of course, we have our supply voltage here. And this looks like a, R out is a very small resistance. And the gain, obviously, can never exceed the supply voltage. So the out output voltage can never succeed exceed the input voltage. And then the other thing that you need to know about an operational amplifier is the operational amplifier tries to keep these two voltages the same through the feedback path. So when you're analyzing an operational amplifier, you can assume that V minus is equal to V plus. So those are the two key things you need to remember when you're analyzing a circuit with an operational amplifier. There's no current flowing into the terminals of the operational amplifier. So I minus is equal to I plus is equal to zero amps. 
and the operational amplifier works to keep the two voltages the same. So V minus is equal to V plus. That means if you know V minus, you also know V plus. We're going to look at a few standard configurations of operational amplifiers, and one of them is the simple voltage follower. So remember, we've got some supply here. And that supplies there even if it isn't explicitly shown in your drawing. And then we'll call this V plus, and that's V minus. And remember that we said one of the key things about an operational amplifier is that it keeps to try the voltages at its two inputs the same. So V plus is equal to V minus, and we know from this voltage source that V plus is equal to one volt. So V minus is also equal to one volt. Right, And then because this is a simple voltage follower, you can see V minus is connected directly to the output, V out. And so for a simple voltage follower, we know that um, V out, therefore, is also equal to 1 volt. This operational amplifier is also called the buffer. Uh, in my next clip, I'll take a look at, a sta at the standard configurations of a, an inverting operational amplifier and a non-inverting operational amplifier. And in the, in the last clip, I'll do a worked example of some cascaded operational amplifiers.